What's good, yo? It's your boy, that motherfucker, Steve. We're on MCTV. We caught up with the one and only Jaron Benton. What's good with you, bro? What's up, that motherfucker, Steve? I'm chilling like a fucking villain, man. We out here in fucking uh, Des Moines. Just put it down. They showed us a lot of love. Appreciate y'all, man. That's what's good, my man. Now, uh, your album, My Grandma's Basement, is out, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's slamming, a lot of love going on out there. You just wrapped up your first solo tour. Now you out on the Life and Times tour. Tell me, tell me what's good with you, man. Shit, man, we out here, we out here getting it. We know we just wrapped up my grandma's basement tour, man, and um, now we on the Life and Times tour. Me, Ritz, Snow, the product out here killing it, man. I, I end up bringing the lamest motherfucker with me, Kato. You know, other than that, it's been going good, man. Every city we've been going to, they've been showing us a lot of fucking love. Like, I don't think the fans understand how much we appreciate all the love, man. And I don't know, man. Next time, I am I will not be anywhere with Kato. Fuck him. Fuck you, He's a bitch. T tell us a little, about, a little bit about Kato, man. Kato, Kato's an interesting guy, man. And the thing about Kato, he's a producer. He's dope as fuck with the beats, man. It's just like with this whole Frank Ocean thing now that a lot of artists are coming out. And you know, I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not against homosexuality. I mean, if you do what you do, but it's the thing that this killing Kato. I think he's torn in between that world. He don't know if he want to come out the closet or. If he, you know, he thinks it's gonna fuck up his music career if he comes out the closet and let everyone know he's gay, and I'm just trying to give him the best support I can and just let him know, like, man, I'm, I'm behind you, man, no homo. I'm, you know, I stand behind you 100, percent man. Whatever decision you make, like, you still the homie, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, the fans are gonna still respect you, man. At the end of the day, so my, my, my message to my little homie, man, is everybody supports you, man. You can, you can come out the closet, dude. It's cool. Hey, Mac, shout out to Macklemore, man, for making it cool for, you know, guys who are homosexual to come out. So, Kato, man, sh sh yeah, come on out the closet, man. <laughs> That's what's good. All right. You heard it first on MCTV. Um, all right, man. So so when you go in the booth, you know what I mean? You, uh, you, you funk volume. You know what I mean? That's your family and whatnot. Um, I know I know M's new album just recently dropped. Yeah. And and it but but a week prior to it dropping, it leaked and it was all over the internet. Do you guys gotta take precautions for shit like that? You know what's crazy? We do. I don't understand how certain shit. Y'all do. I get it. I know how it leaks. Cause yes, yeah, my shit actually leaked. I think hops and shit leaked. I, Cause what happens when you when you're doing press for some of these albums, you gotta send them out. You know, to certain uh, you know press and people and shit like that. So I think yeah exactly they get the review so i think the shit just kind of get tossed over and somebody has the fucking smart idea leaking shit but yeah we do got to watch out for that shit man uh shout out to eminem i actually like that album by the way i heard a lot of hating on it but i personally think it's a dope album yeah so, salute to you m so so you've had an opportunity to work with a lot of heavy hitters man you got you got featured on a stevie stone album um, uh, you know what I mean. You work with Hopson and and your Funk Volume fa family. Who would you like to work with that you ain't had an opportunity to mess with in the game yet? Man, if I could fucking work with Outkast, that'd be a dream come true. Like, a, a, I swear to God, man, if I could work. See, I don't think nobody. Listen, I'm from Atlanta, born and raised in that motherfucker. So when Outkast hit, I don't think people understand like the doors they opened in Atlanta. They they're the ones that made like. 
the MCs say, fuck it. I'm an MC. I'm coming from Atlanta. They don't, they're, they're responsible for birthing any real lyricist out of fucking the A, man. I got to give it to them, man. So that would be a dream if I could work with Outkast, Big Boy, and Andre. Do some crazy shit. That would be dope. So that's my dream collab. Then I'm going to make it fucking happen, god damn it. All right, now you got the, uh, the, the now this is epic right here. The the Funk Volume Independent Living DVD hit hit movie theaters nationwide. It was, it was what, Kato? <laughs> it was, it was, it was, speak on that real quick, fam. Yeah, shout out to the doc. Actually, Kato went in it, man. He was a fucking, uh, a nobody back then. But yeah, man, the Funk Volume documentary, we did premiere at a couple of, uh, movie theaters, man. Uh, a lot of people fuck with it, man. Before we put it out, we was actually thinking about putting it in film festivals, but with the film festivals, you gotta, they gotta be the first motherfuckers to see it, so... We can't. Unfortunately, we can't put it in any film festivals right now. But um, it's dope, man. I think it. I think it's a dope documentary. It, it gives you an insight on the reality of our lives behind the fucking MC shit. So it's dope, man. It's out actually. You can get it at myfunkvolume.com. Independent living DVD documentary. It's some dope shit. Fuck with it, and fuck Kato. He's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now uh, Knock Madness just dropped yeah. Hop's new album, um, and I, I know you. I know you got some slaps on there. Can you can you speak on that a little bit? Yeah, shout out to Hopson. Speaking of Knock Madness, you know what's crazy? I got to give it to him. I got to take my hat out to the home, take my hat off to the homie, man. That's actually, I'm not just saying this shit because I'm a part of the group, man. But that's a dope fucking album. Like him and Dizzy, shit, man. Uh, the fucking uh god damn what the hell is the name of golden age god damn it the golden age knock madness man i them shit stay consistently on my fucking ipod no bullshit i ain't saying that but i say both of my homies man they did a great fucking job man if y'all ain't got them go get them along with my grandma's basement but yeah we got a track on that me him and dizzy called knock knock um it's sort of like there's no particular topic to the fucking uh the song we just all going in that's all it is it's just three fucking mcs going to fuck in and um yeah it's a dope track man a dope fucking album a salute to hop for that album too all right now i know you've been out moving you know what i mean you've been on the tour um i recently you know i, mean, I stay on the blogs and whatnot i recently caught up on the on the double xl mentioned funk volume um and i think it's in the publication as well and and uh there were 10 tracks by funk volume not to miss and i believe you were on three of them i'm over here cheating off my little piece of paper but but i mean three of them three of them either were yours or had you featured on it do you do you get a do you pick up on that Hell yeah, man. I, and shout out to Double XL, man, for fucking showing me love on that. Uh, Y'all should give me the freshman cover. You know what? <laughs> you know, fuck that. Yeah. Y'all should give me the freshman cover this year, man. Why not? Fuck it. Huh? Appreciate the love. Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's, the fuck, let's make it. Let's make an epic fucking cover, man. So I got some, I got some shit I want to do for this cover, too. So we finna make that happen. Shout out to Double XL, but yeah, we was on. Uh, they gave us a fucking good look, man. They was like, uh, they did a little publication, and they were saying like the the dopest funk volume tracks, not to miss miss. And they they actually mentioned us on there, and they gave they gave the the tracks. And the, unfortunately, I don't even remember what tracks they said, but fuck with us, fuck with all our tracks, actually. All right, now we go last last question. We're gonna spin back to to free basing with Kevin Bacon because I I, I got I got to bring that up, man. This is my first opportunity to get at you about it. Now, how, where where did where did that concept come from? Because that is a I, I, I keep it slapping in the whip. You know what I mean? And right. Now, nah, free basing with Kevin Bacon. I did a pro, I did a project, a little EP with the homies SMKA before that, and we called it Huff and Glue at Hasselhoff. And free basing with Kevin Bacon was a continuation of the EP of Huff and Glue at Hasselhoff. So. I still wanted to keep it within that same name vein of, you know, just doing some fucking random drugs with a and actually I did Huff Glue Hasselhoff, by the way. But I wanted to keep I wanted to keep the title, you know, in that same vein, you know, since it was like a part two of Huff and Glue. I didn't want to do Huff and Glue at Hasselhoff part two. I just wanted to do something something within that vein. So I was like, you know what, fucking free base with Kevin Bacon. We all was sitting in the room, we was just thinking the shit and then free base with Kevin Bacon came up. And that's how you came up with it. And plus, I feel the sound of that album fits it. It sounds like it's so fucking turned up. It sounds like you're fucking freebasing. You, you know, you see the freebasing or you're on some sort of meth. That's the whole fucking 
sound of that project and it was intentionally done like that too like i remember when i put it out people were saying this shit's so dope but it's just so you know turned up or yeah but it was a, i was an intentionally album that was made to be turned up all the way it's probably like maybe two songs on that is kind of like maybe retrospective but um that's how we did it man i just wanted to still keep that same crazy ass fucking title in the vein but still fit the feel of the cd and you got free bass with fucking kevin bacon well that's it i mean you heard it right here it's your boy that motherfucker steve my man right here jaron benton we about we about to close it out any chance you can close us out with a couple of bars Hell yeah, man! I definitely would close you out with some bars, you know. And I met, I remember meeting you before, cause your name, that motherfucker Steve, which is a dope, was a dope fucking. I'm gonna catch you with some bars, man. Uh, hasta luego. I penetrate the hole of a bago. I don't fuck with bitch niggas by the name of Cato. He's Gato. Fuck him. If I had a gun, click clack, I buck him. Magical Raz Taz. He's a type of guy to get fucked in his ass. By dudes and his dad. He'd be like, Thank you, ma'am. I'm glad that I'm gay. Coasting. Word on the street, he fucked Frank Ocean. Cato, he's a bitch. If I see him, I'ma hit him in the head with a fifth of Hennessy. Remember me? Jaron Benton, elementary, school was kicked out, my dick was pulled out, bitches licked it. Descriptive on some other shit. Huffing glue at Hasselhoff, I knock your fucking glasses off. Diana Ross, I'm just speaking bullshit. Gibberish. Kato, he's a bitch again. Fuck Kato. There we go. <laughs> That's it. That motherfucker Steve, Jeremy, man, we out. We out.